<laughs> What's up dudes, lady dudes, welcome back to Just Nuts, and today guys we're doing a really cool video. Um, so if you've ever heard anybody in Yu-Gi-Oh uh, talk about tiering or Okay, just you know, just mention a deck and where it lands in tiers in Yu-Gi-Oh, but you never really could make sense of it because it seemed like everybody had different definitions and different criteria of what makes decks fit into certain tiers, so it never really made sense. Um, that's why this video is here, because I'm going to try and make uh, the most sense so that it's easy for you to understand where most people are talking about what most people are talking about when they're trying to list decks in certain tiers and you can have your own opinions that make sense for putting decks in certain tiers um, so that's the main goal this is going to make it make more sense for everybody right there so um, the first thing is that uh, there are a ton of differences between the, the criteria like I said is that the biggest problem is that there's no general consensus for everybody in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. It seems like a ton of people have their own definitions of, of tiers and stuff, so this isn't gonna be 100% you know, scientific and perfectly developed where everybody will completely agree with this, but this seems to be um, where I have landed on like what all these tiers mean, and hopefully it helps make more sense to you as well in organizing like which decks are better than others and where everything lands. So let's um, let's jump right into this. So we're just going to start from tier from like the top of the tiers and work our way down, right? So the first tier here is tier one, right? So these are usually going to be your first to like like one the best one to three decks in the in the game currently that's usually where these land and i think the best way to describe this is by top cut in bigger tournaments and by bigger tournaments i'm talking mainly about ycs as you can talk about wcqs as well um, or you know nationals if you're in that season but usually the ycs is because in regionals you just see way too many kind of it's way too watered down with like just people trying to run fun decks. Um, whereas if you're going to a YCS, most people tend to run legitimate top tier decks because they're really trying to get their top cut slots. So we're gonna kind of go off of these based on like the percentage of of each deck that or of that deck that can make it into top cut, and that'll kind of help it fall into a tier to a certain extent. It's not always gonna be set in stone, perfectly done like that, but. For the most part so for tier one i think between like seven and 13 slots in in um in a top cut is probably the best way to find uh and and define tier one um that's going to be like between 20 and about 41 percent of top cut slots um the best examples of these currently to help make sense of this is with examples is uh sky strikers and probably like the dark danger dark Dark Warrior, Goki deck, all of like the Dark slash Warrior Link decks. Those those are like the two best decks in the game. I kind of throw all those together in because they're all like kind of similar in what they do. Um, they probably are the best examples of tier one. Um, and as you get closer to like that forty percent, so uh, seven to thirteen percent, you're getting dangerously close to becoming closer to like 0.5 or even. Uh, tier zero which are is a very dangerous thing in a game like Yu-Gi-Oh or any card game really but be aware that the higher you get the more dangerous you get um, these are the decks that are always most likely to be hit on the ban list and um, usually these decks can take any other deck on like obviously there are going to be decks that have better matchups but generally these decks have like better engines more powerful engines and can already do very versatile things that um, Maybe they have bad matchups, but they still have ways to combat those just because of how powerful their engines are in general. Um, and yeah, so that's usually where you find tier one um, right there. Next, we're gonna move to tier two, which usually takes two to six slots um, in top cut. So that's about six to 20%. Um, and as you work down the tiers, the tiers usually get bigger and bigger. It's kind of uh, set up like a pyramid where tier one, you may have one to three decks, and then tier two, you may have three to five to six decks, usually, something like that. And then so on and so far, as it keeps getting wider and wider, the tiers keep getting bigger and bigger the further down you go. Um, the best examples of um, tier two decks are right now are probably Thunder Dragon and Altergeist. So, um, and keep in mind when we're talking about this, this is all about like uh, expectations. Um, you're not always gonna see these decks get, like fit perfectly into like the top cut slots I have listed here to like, to fit them because 
Um, it's all, you know, sample size, and you may be one, maybe Alter Geist may have a poor tournament showing one week and only get one top cut, and then the next weekend they have a different YCS and they get four or five, right? A much better showing. So, but you're just on average expecting them to end up between two and six slots. Same thing with tier one. You're, you're ex expecting those decks on average to land between seven and 13. So that's usually how I do, do it there. It's all averages. So um, keep that in mind. Um, you'll see a lot of line riders around tier two and line riders are just kind of decks that ride the line between tiers, right? Um, so right now, like, Thunder Dragons are probably riding the line between Tier 1 and Tier 2. Like, they're kind of, they usually end up with closer to five top cut slots, so that's pretty close to being able to work its way into Tier 1. It did have one YCS showing, but that was its opening weekend, uh, where it did end up with over uh, six top set, cut slots. But since then, it's kind of calmed down, and it's been calmly in Tier 2, and I think that's where it'll land for the most part for the near future. Um, and also from below, you'll see um, tier two decks that like end up with like usually two and sometimes one or none top cut slots. And these decks can like, that's where you end up with like, are these tier three, tier 2.5, or are these two? They're like right on the line. And that's okay. I mean, this is just to help, like not every deck is gonna fit perfectly into every tier. There are gonna be decks that are where you're like, oh, that's not really tier two, but it's not, it's better than tier three, but it's not quite tier two. And that's okay, because this is all just trying to help you ga get a gauge for how good these decks land, and that's even better, where it may not be exactly in tier two, but it's gonna be more accurate to be tier 2.5 there. So, um, and the last thing for like tier point, uh, tier two is there, you're gonna start to get a little more um, matchup dependent, because um, as these decks go out, so usually what happens is the most versatile decks end up at the top, and they have powerful engines that can do a lot of different things, and then as you work your way down, you're going to end up with decks that are much less versatile. They do their thing very well, but they're prone to bad matchups. They're prone to matchup-dependent, you know, tournament experiences, where if you face a bunch of bad matchups, you're not likely to top, um, there. So they still have pretty powerful engines, but they just can't cover it with just their own versatility like decks in tier one usually can. Um, then we're gonna move to tier three. Usually tier three, uh, usually decks there usually only get one or zero uh, top cut slots, so zero to three percent, because that's, you know, one top, one slot out of 32 is about three percent, uh, the total uh, top cut line up there. Uh, the best examples of tier three decks right now, I feel like are kind of like Gem, FTK, and Noble Knights. Um, Noble Knights just got their support. We've seen multiple of these decks already since the new support make it to day two at YCSs, but we're unfortunately unable to uh, slide into top cut. But if they're able to make it to day two and come one win away, that's only one win. They just need to take one of their ties or one of their losses and turn that into a win, and then they're in top cut. So if, they're, if they can get that close, then they can get one more win. So I would call them a tier three deck. And Gen FTK, we've seen them grab one tier, like one top cut slot here and there, but it's so inconsistent. It feels like it's every three or four YCSs we see one random Gen FTK. It's not consistent enough to get near tier two, um, but it can happen. So and keep in mind, this is all expectation. So usually these are just decks you're not expecting to get there to make it to top cut. But if they do, you're not going to be like crazy surprised. It's going to be very cool, but it's going to be like, yeah, like we all knew this deck could do some pretty powerful things. Um, it just takes one really good duelist or one really good day um, to work themselves into top cut. Um, keep in mind that tier three can play these higher tier decks. It's just going to be harder. Um, and usually you can't stretch further than two tiers away in terms of like still being able to compete so this is all about being competitive and not just being blown away right so i think tier three decks can play tier one and can beat them it's just not going to be as consistent um with you know those matchups and being able to like play them hard and, and even win um but they can still play they can still be competitive with tier two and tier one decks um like that then we're gonna move to tier four. Tier four usually, hmm. So like you're not gonna to expect to ever see a tier four deck to really make it to a top cut in a YCS. If it does, it's, it'd be the most crazy lucky matchup slash whatever day that ever happened. Um, these decks are usually like where they, they get just, they're just too slow to keep up with the meta. Um, 
they are more and more, the further you go down, the more and more normal summon reliant you're going to get because Yu-Gi-Oh is all about speed these days. You want to do most of your plays turn one, or at least set up turn one. Um, and it just can't. So because this deck is three tiers behind tier one, this is where you start to see like this these decks can't compete at all with like tier one. Um, they may be able to keep up, like not keep up, but like compete with some tier two decks. But like you're still not going to be expecting to win most of those. Uh, the best examples I could find here were like crawlers because that's a flip based deck, just like like a mechanic that's too far behind the times, way too slow. Um, and Gladiator Beast, where in its prime it was very good, but it's still a very normal summon reliant deck, and its removal is okay. It's just overall, like, they're just underwhelming to where the game is currently. Um, and that's kind of where I land with those. Then we move to Tier 5 here, and Tier 5 is kind of a strange place because when you hear people talk about Tier 5, Tier 5 and Tier 10 might as well be the same thing, because if you're Tier 5, you're bad. If you're Tier 10, you're bad. It's just, like, where the bad decks go that, like, you're not playing unless it's, like, just a deck, like, an archetype you love, and you just want to try and make it work as much as you can. Um, otherwise, you're not really going to see it get any play. These archetypes are usually way, way older, because Konami knows better than to make a Tier 5 deck currently. So usually these are just decks that got phased out of existence with the, you know, development of the game and, and the deck getting fast or the game getting faster and faster so the best examples i could find of this were uh, arch fiends and like triamids two very normal summon reliant decks um very bricky very poor mechanics uh arch fiends got a link monster but it's like the worst link monster in all of link frames pack one so there you go these decks barely special summon at all uh, they're completely underwhelming. They like like the only way they can compete with anything is just with uh, like very good staples added in. So like you know you play a ton of hand traps. You play some very power powerful solemns. You know powerful trap cards. You know what I mean? That's the only way you can really compete. Powerful floodgates where other decks may not be able to play through, but you luckily can. Something like that. That's like really the main way you're ever going to be able to compete with anything in this deck. And with like the two tier dispersion rule and, and being able to compete, tier five decks aren't really expecting to compete with anything higher than tier three, tier three maybe. Um, but yeah, that's about it. It's rough. And you hear people joke about like um, all uh, trick stars and call them you know trick stars are tier ten. This is something I just want to touch on really quick. You hear people talk about trick stars and like oh trick stars are tier ten. They're terrible. I hate them. I think that's more hatred for the archetype as a whole instead of. Um, <laughs> instead of uh, what they actually are, because Trick Stars are probably like a tier 2.5 deck currently, maybe even tier 2 on a good day. Um, but yeah, so those are like the, the main tiers. And I did want to touch on this really quick, is tier 0. I mean, we've seen tier 0 formats. Um, you won't see them very often, because Konami now is very, very careful to make sure this does not happen. Uh, but tier 0 is like when a deck takes up like more than half of the top cut slots in a tournament and they just dominate everything. They're just by far and away the best deck in the game. The The best examples of this as of recent are like Spirals. Spiral had a very brief, you know, couple weeks where like they had YCSs and they were winning like over 20 of like the top cuts in YCSs and Zodiac as well. Zodiac format, when Zodiacs were in their prime, uh, that deck was taking most top cut slots as well. Um, they're just dominant, they're very short-lived because they're very liable to be hit on the ban list very, very quickly, and that's about it. Like, if we're in Tier 0 format, you'll know it. It's not, there's not going to be much debate. Uh, it's going to be pretty set in stone. They're just going to be dominating everything. It just is what it is. Um, so that's about where I think all, most of these tiers make the most sense, and hopefully this helped you learn more about, like, where most of these decks land and what people are talking about when they're talking about tiers in Yu-Gi-Oh!, so, um, but before I let you go, I want you to make sure you take all of this with a grain of salt. There are some things you need to know before you just assume, right? So first one is everyone's going to have a different definition and, and criteria for all this stuff. So uh, make sure if you're talking to somebody that you're on the same page on what tiers equal the same thing, and then you can go from there. And also people are just going to have different opinions based on their personal experiences uh, for how good each deck is. Like maybe somebody plays Thunder Dragon, which has a good Sky Striker matchup, so they just never really valued Sky Strikers all that much. They just go, ah, Sky Strikers tier two, like they're all right, but 
Uh, I never had problems with them. Well, yeah, you play a deck that has a good matchup against them, so you would not have problems against them for the most part. Um, but they still are better than your deck overall because your deck is kind of a one-trick pony. So just keep that in mind that different people are going to come from different angles for this. Um, the other thing is that sample size is incredibly important. Don't just look at one YCS, like top cut, and assume that that's where everything falls, right? You look at one top, because we saw very recently, we saw when Thunder Dragons came out, Sky Strikers only had four top cut slots that weekend, and Thunder Dragons had nine. So immediately everybody went, oh no, like Thunder Dragons are the new tier one, Sky Strikers are down to tier two because they can't compete with them. And then what happened the very next weekend, the hype for Thunder Dragons calmed down. People who were playing the deck that first weekend were kind of like, eh, the deck's cool, but like, I don't like it. Um, and then Sky Striker went right back to having like 10 top cut slots, back up to tier one, and Thunder Dragons came down to tier two with about five top cut slots, I think, uh, somewhere around there. Um, so just keep in mind, there needs to be sample size for this. You need to make sure you're not just looking at one top cut because you know, we, we saw Trick Stars have, you know, two top cut slots this last YCS, but that doesn't make it a tier two deck entirely. It's not confirmed because uh, because weekends before this at YCS, like very recent YCSs, it didn't have any or even or only like one top cut slot. So um, it's like in between. It's not guaranteed a tier two. Um, and then the last thing is uh, just know that every deck isn't going to fit perfectly in tiers. Like I just said, um, Trick Stars are right between Tier 2 and Tier 3. Thunder Dragons are probably between Tier 1 and Tier 2. There's going to, like, no matter what tier you're looking at, just don't, you don't have to fit a deck into every single, you know, tier. They can be in between, and it just kind of gives you a, a gauge of, like, they're not quite as good as this tier, but they are better than this tier. Um, and I think that's better for just having more developed, you know, a better developed tiering system overall. So there you go, guys. That's my uh, my little tiering tutorial right there. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe for, uh, for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content in the future because I'm uh, staying on the grind for sure. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get the hell out of here. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.